Spirit to inspire, Lord, to connect with our hearts, Lord, your words, your life, your faith, Father, Lord, your very nature to be imparted within us, Lord, that we see things that we haven't seen, and you remind us of things that we've forgotten, that you've shown us in the past, Lord, and that you would show us new and good things, Father. Bring us to the place that you would desire us to be, Father. And we thank you, Lord, to you. We'll give you all the praise and all the glory always Amen. to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, I want to talk to you this morning about environment. Um, before I do that, the Lord laid it on my heart. Uh, actually, last time I spoke, I didn't get to go that far. Does anybody remember the last time I taught what I taught on? Don't hurt my feelings. Come on. <laughs> About being a witness. Empowered to be a witness when you give your testimony. Anybody remember that? Yes. Yeah. The empowerment and the anointing of God comes on you when you begin to speak about things you've seen, things you've heard, and things you've known. Well, I also want to tell you, explain a little bit and a little bit deeper into that as far as your testimony. You're bearing witness. That's what a testimony is. You're bearing witness. When you testify in a court, you are bearing witness, right? You are a witness. Yeah, I seen it. I heard it. I was there. I experienced it. That kind of thing. So if you want that empowerment and that anointing to come on, your testimony it's always got to be about Him. Amen. Always magnifying Him. Come on. Hallelujah. Right? Yeah. So, you want to put all the attention on Him. Right. Let me give you an example of something that might not get a whole lot of attention to the Lord. Let me think here a minute. Okay, well, you know, I was out in the yard and... I was going along, and I'm just walking around, and this gopher put a hole, and I didn't see it, and I stepped in it, and I twisted my ankle, and I got a lot of pain, and then they took me to the doctor, I rubbed some salve on it, and the Lord healed me, and I'm standing here. Where was all the attention on them? Me and things the enemy had a place in. So we want to, when you make it short, with the details, with the situation, and put the emphasis on him. I was in the yard, and bless God, man, the devil met, had a snare for me, but bless God, he brought me out, and he healed me. I have no pain now, and I'm whole. Amen. Do you see what I'm saying? That's how you want a testimony. Right. When we do testimonies here, we're not looking for all the details and all that. We're looking to magnify God, not magnify what the enemy did or what you did. Amen. Did that catch you? Yeah. All right, so please remember that because there is an empowerment, as we read in Acts, that you're empowered to be a witness. But the witness has got to be about him and not magnifying you or the situation or the devil. Got it? Okay, that was really short, sweet, but you got the point, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So, let's go to Genesis 1, verse 1. No, I'm not going to go through the Bible, so you can be at ease. <laughs> How many know there's an environment around us? Okay. We got first one up there. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How did it get here? God created it, right? This is not something for weak people that need a crutch to stand on. How did it get here? God created it, right? God. God. The Bible says fools believe there is no God. So how did it get here? God created it. Right? Do you believe that with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Amen. God created it. See, you know, there's a reason why P 
people try to believe other things and they don't want to believe in God because they don't want to be dependent upon Him. They don't want to be submissive to Him. So they try to come up with something else they can believe. The Big Bang. There may have been a Big Bang. I don't know. But it didn't get here by a Big Bang. Can you imagine that? I mean, just think about it. Bang. And, and all of a sudden, when, this, when all the dust settles, here's the earth. Just the right distance from the sun. Not too far. Not too close. Here's the, the, the land is divided by the oceans. Just exactly right. In the right places. It's not too hot. Not too cold. That's kind of like saying, you know, setting off a couple of C4s in a salvage yard. And when all the dust clears, you got a brand new Mercedes sitting there. That's harder to believe than this, isn't it? You, I mean, you know, you know why there's missing links? Because it ain't there. <laughs> right? So God made it. It's just a matter of fact. Right? God created it. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. <clears throat> How many know God does not create anything dark and empty? So obviously, this is the beginning for us, but not necessarily the beginning of all things. I mean, you have questions like, where did all this darkness come from? Where did it, all these devils and demons come from? Well... <clears throat> Obviously, that doesn't pertain to us a whole lot. So what are we going to look at? God created, and then the Spirit of God was moving on the face of the waters. Right? Yes. Okay? God created. Preach it. Okay? Preach it. And He's moving over. Obviously, a lot happened there between verse 1 and 2. There's a few, the Bible gives a few indications of what happened, but we're not going to go there this morning. We want to look at the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And the Spirit of God is moving. Can you say that? The Spirit of God is moving. Well, that's also typical. That was then, but it's also typical of now. The Spirit of God is hovering. He's moving. Waters is a type of, uh, the Bible refers to that as large masses of people, nations, groups of people. But here I believe is literally moving over the face of the waters. Anybody with me? Okay. Well, it's also typical of today. Is the Spirit of God hovering over this planet? Hovering over the people today? He's still here. And he's still hovering. He's moving. He's waiting. And this, this uh, Jesus paints a picture of this. Jesus stood up on a mountain. He said, oh, Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. How I would have gathered you. Like a mother hen gathers the chicks, but you wouldn't. The Spirit of God representing the Father God. Creator of heavens and earth. And the Lord Jesus, the Word made flesh, hovers over the face of the earth now. Amen. He's still hovering. He's still waiting. Ready to be the great comforter. Ready for anyone who would come and believe in Jesus. He's still hovering and waiting. Say amen. Amen. He's ready to talk to you. He's ready to teach you. He's ready to help you. He's ready to comfort you. you. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Good. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and he won't leave us orphans. Didn't he say that? He said, I'm not going to leave you orphans. He said, I'll go away and I'm going to send you another comforter. And he'll lead you and he'll guide you and he'll teach you. He'll even bring things to remembrance that he showed you. Thank God for that. Any of you thank God for that? <laughs> yeah, the great Holy Spirit. He's hovering over the face of the deep. And what happened next? God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw, God saw that the light was good. 
good. From the beginning it was that way. And it's always been up that way up to now and will always be that way. The Spirit of God is ready to manifest His power to bring the Word of God to pass. Did you notice He was moving, but nothing happened until words came forth. Has He changed? No, He's still the same. This will help you. This will help you. Right here, we just got right here an indication of how, how to keep from getting off. God said there was light and what? And it was good. You know, in my few short years of walking with the Lord, I've seen people get off. Anybody ever seen anybody get off track? Yeah, in my early days. I mean, hey, even I got off a little bit. You know, seeking the supernatural, seeking manifestations of the Spirit. Thank God for good, strong examples, man. Thank God for good, strong people He's placed in my life. Amen. I mean, there were times that I thought for sure, man, hey, this is a move of God. You know, and then I hear them talking about it, and they say, nope. And like, what? I thought there's scripture for it. But see, we realized they'd already been there. They'd already seen it. <clears throat> so, Realize that a lot of things, just because they're spiritual, doesn't mean they're God. If it's God, it will always be good. It will always be light. Amen. 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 Do you get revelation right now? It will always be good. It will always bring light. Amen. Amen. Oh, they can be real. These things can be real, and they can be spiritual, but it doesn't mean it's God. We should not be just hungry for the supernatural and manifestations and miracles. We should be hungry for God. Amen. 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 Right? I've seen people, I know people that pushed and pressed into these things, deeper things, and they got dark. They got into darkness. There was darkness about them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Then they, they usually become super secretive. You know, like we're beyond everybody else. Well, see, that's the nature of the devil, isn't it? Pride. That's what got him in trouble. No, they're not the only ones that know God. They're not the only ones that know about the Spirit of God. Amen. So when you're getting, and if you notice, they get so intense, but you notice they've lost their joy. Their joy is gone. Oh, it's supernatural, but it's not God. It may be spiritual, but it's not God. When it's God, it'll always be light, right? Amen. When it's God, it'll always be good. Amen. There'll always be peace with it. There'll always be joy with it. Can I get an amen? They always bring strength with it. <laughs> we are coming into a time I know. I know that I know that I know. So I've got to get you on board with me in faith. We're coming in time where God is going to begin to move and manifest himself. So I'm teaching you some things so you don't get off and you don't go following some other new thing and this and that. And just because it's a fancy book with a, a guy with a lot of letters and accolades after his name doesn't mean it's good. That's right. Just because he's been on TV for 40 years doesn't mean it's good. That's right. It'll always be good. It'll always be light. It'll always bring joy and peace. You hear me? All right. It'll be strength. Remember the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, not ill-tempered and short. <laughs> right? Long-suffering, not, not harsh. Gentleness, not being hard. Right? Meekness, not pride. Temperance. That means they've got some self-control. <laughs> and it'll bring faith. And faithfulness is with it too, isn't it? Yeah. 
See, that's having the nature of God. And it'll help you from getting off. Because there's a lot of stuff popping up. How many know that? There has been a lot of stuff, and there's still a lot of stuff coming up. We want to stay right. We don't want, we don't want to get where it's dark. We want to stay with the Spirit of God. And remember, the Word of God is light, and it is good. The Holy Ghost is not a dark spirit. And if you've been born again, even just two weeks ago, and if you've only been praying in tongues only a half a day, don't let nobody who's supposed to know God more than you, and don't ever ignore what's going on inside. That's where he is. He will bear witness. So you'll know if it's him. Even if you're a baby, I don't know how baby you are, don't ignore what's going on inside. Okay? So he's going to, if you're uncomfortable with it, don't make the mistake and follow somebody blindly because they supposedly know something more than you. Preach it. Amen? It doesn't matter if they're a pastor, evangelist, prophet, or whatever. Remember, you have the same spirit that was hovering over the face of the deep, the same spirit that communicated with Jesus, that same spirit is inside of you to lead you, guide you, and reveal truth to you. Amen. 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 All right, so we don't want to get off and follow something else, some other man or woman, or some other prophet or, pro prophet or some other imagination of somebody else. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, in that day, there'll be none coming to his brother and say, know the Lord, for they all know me. Remember, from the least to the greatest, they'll all know me because we have the same spirit. Say, same spirit is in me. That was in Jesus. He's in me. He'll never leave me. He'll always guide me. Amen. I should be getting some excitement in here. A little body language going on. Yeah, yeah. Preacher brother. <laughs> All right. Let me get back on track. Oh, okay. Yeah. The same spirit that's in any true believer. So don't ignore what's going inside of you. What's going on inside of you. I know I'm not going to have enough time today to get into where I want to go. So I'm going to keep on going. Overtime. Remember in 1 Corinthians it said to judge everything. Every prophet must be judged. Every word. Preacher. Every word, every sermon, every song ought to be judged. Come on, hey, come on. Right? Yes, every day. On point. That's why you need to read your chapter every day. Because you'll, you'll get familiar with the body of the book. And, I mean, over a period of time, you'll get familiar with the body of the book. And then you'll know. Somebody will say something. You say, oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. It says this here. See, he'll bring things to remembrance. Kind of, I don't know, let me back up here. I don't get off. So when a preacher starts getting off, you'll know it. When somebody begins to pray, you'll know when it's off. Because you'll know the word. <clears throat> Amen. You follow the spirit inside. You follow the word. Thank God for the word. How will you know if they're getting off? Always go back to the word. Don't just accept it. Make sure it lines up with the word. You must, before you accept it, act on it and live by it. Make sure it's in the word. It must meet that criteria. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, Genesis 1, 2. The moving of the Spirit over the waters. <clears throat> He's still moving today. I want to talk about why, some particulars about why the Spirit of God moves or doesn't move. Anybody interested? Yes. Yes. Amen. You know, we've, we've recognized that He moves in some places more than others. Here's the question. Do we play a part in that? Big part. Big part. 
That's right, a big part, so much of it. <clears throat> there are some places he moves much more than others. There are some places he moves in a much wider uh, arena than others. People have thought, well, you know, when God's ready to move, he'll just move. Has, and, but, and the problem with this, that is it leaves you with the implication that we have nothing to do with it. Not so. If you study the scriptures, you'll find that we have a lot to do with it. Amen. Come on. Preach it. Here we go. You can yield to the Spirit of God, and we can cooperate with the Spirit of God. Or as the Bible talks about, there are people who resist the Holy Spirit. We don't want to resist the Holy Spirit. We want to be cautious about quenching the Spirit. Doesn't the Bible talk about quenching the Spirit, resisting the Spirit? We don't want that. Amen, Pastor. You don't want to do it. scripture back up? <clears throat> well, then, if that's the case, then it must be possible that we have a lot to do with it. Can't read my own writing. Can you shut down the Holy Spirit? Nope. Can you absolutely shut? That's an awesome thought that we can actually stop the Holy Spirit from moving and doing what He wants to do. I'm not talking about just in the church. I'm talking about in your personal life. Do we want, I want the Holy Spirit not to be quenched, not to be hindered or shut down, not just in the church, but also in my personal life. Amen. I want Him to be able to manifest Himself in my house, in my home, around my family, when I go on the job, wherever I go, I want Him to have that liberty to manifest Himself. Amen. Amen. So, and I play a lot in that. Amen. You play a lot in that. Our attitudes. Uh oh. Emotions. Because so many times we fail to cooperate with Him. Amen. We fail to for, to remember Him. Hallelujah. How many of you caught yourself doing that? Doing about your work, doing your own thing, and all of a sudden, later on, three hours later, oh yeah, before you go to sleep, oh yeah, thank you, Lord. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about y'all day, but thank you for being with me anyway. All right. But people try, they people genuinely get in one ditch or the other. People tend to, uh, they get to the place where after, there's absolutely, I've been there, you've been there, there are churches where there's absolutely no moving of the Spirit. I mean, it's only the letter of the Word and it's dry. Anybody been there? Yeah. yeah. Need a drink. And that's just more legalism. But then there's others where not only the Spirit of God moves, but there are other spirits moving. <laughs> Anybody been there? Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah. I've been in the midst of both of them. I've been in, in the midst of meetings where God's moving. I mean, outstanding things are happening. There's miracles. and But then there's a few things that get off. And then that's why other ministers, they draw back. And they back off from the spirit, spirit of God. They don't want him moving because of people getting off. Other things getting off. I remember, uh, what was it, up in Canada years ago, there was a move of the spirit. I mean, miraculous things were happening. But there's also a lot of goofy things happening. I mean, there are people walk, crawling around on the floor, acting like a chicken, making chicken noise, walking around, moving like cows, and all kinds of goofy stuff. You know, but hey, let's find the middle part, huh? Anybody want to, want to do that? Because the Spirit of God gets to moving, and people get to begin to get into liberty, and then people think, well, that's my opportunity. Right. <clears throat> it's what I call I call mic grabbers, attention grabbers. Yeah. They got an obsession with having the attention. So they grab the mic and I got something, I gotta give it, I gotta get give it. 
And then next thing you know, you've lost the service. Anybody experienced that? Spirit of God is moving. Somebody gets up and they'll start putting people down or prophesying doom and gloom or something else goofy. And next thing you know, the anointing's gone. I've been there. Some of you've been there. That's what we don't want. Amen. Or somebody thought they were the prophet of the hour. And they get real adamant and pushy. Did you hear that? Pushy. That's one way you can tell it's the wrong spirit. Because they get pushy. God, the Holy Spirit, is the perfect gentleman. He will never push you, coerce you, or force you to do things. He's always in order. It's people that get out of order. And other spirits that get out of order. And being young, you know, I've been there where, you know, in the Lord, and man, it's just like we're open. We just want God to move. Anybody with me? We just want God to move. We just want God to move. You know, and that's a good attitude, and that's a good heart. But we've got to have some understanding and we've got to have some leadership. Another way, otherwise you get off. What do you, when somebody grabs the mic and they take off or just stand up and they start going in the di wrong direction, that's where you need a leader can bring, bring it back in order, Amen. in love. Preach it. Right? right? Preach so that you stay with the move of God. Do you follow me? I'm with you. All right, good, good. All right. You know, there's a lot of people who, uh, how do I want to say it? They have a ministry, they don't have a ministry of their own. So they want to use somebody else's. They want to use somebody else's ability and resources. And it's really, they don't have one of their own because they don't want to, they don't want to submit to somebody else. They don't want to be teachable. Come on. Come on. So they're like rebels. Yep. You know what I mean? And so they, they feel like, well, here's the opportunity. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to take it. I'm show them what I got. <laughs> Anybody seen that? Amen. You can spot it a mile away. When you, when you, when you've been in a place where God is moving and he's using people, you can tell when it's real. You can discern when it's real. You can discern when it's pride. When there's And, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, there, there's sometimes there's a mix. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you know, but what should the emphasis always be on? Who should be getting the attention? God. You know, Jesus never took credit for one sermon or one healing. He always said it's the Father that did it. The Father did it. He never took credit for anything. I've been there. I had a small dose of big headitis. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. And I'm glad. And you know what? I have this, I have this, I say, never, the Lord gave me this years ago, I like it, I'm not sure, I think I heard another minister say it, and I like it, and it's really true. Never, never try to be impressive. Amen. Amen. To impress. Never, never seek to impress. Amen. Just be impressive. In other words, you know where you're at. You know God is with you, and you just do what you know you got to do. You're not holding back. You're not adding to it. You're not seeking to impress. There are times that I've been speaking in places. I purpose not to come up with stuff to make it sound like I want to be impress you. I purpose not to impress you because I want Him to be. I want him to be exalted. I want all the glory to go to God. Amen. And he will move yes, he in that atmosphere. Yes, he He'll move in that environment. Yes, 
Amen. All right, let me get uh, let me get back on track here. So strong leaders don't let that happen, but at the same time, a leader should not be so intense that they quench the spirit and quench quench everything else. So you can see there's got to be some leading. There's got to be some openness. There's got to be some strength and some direction too. Also to go along with that. And that's why there's so many places that don't do it right. I'm not saying I've arrived. But I'm, I, I, I can see both sides. And I don't want to get in either ditch. Amen. Amen. Amen, hey, Pastor Kevin, I'm with you. All right. I'm just egging myself. Come on. <laughs> yeah, little body language. Yeah, brother, preach it. I just don't want you to go to sleep on me. It's just a mess. We, uh, we would like the Lord to be pleased. Hey, Amen. There you go. I like to, well, I don't want to get into that kind of stuff. I would like the Lord to be pleased and find this easy to work with. Sorry. Anybody want that? All the time. All the time. That's right. <clears throat> I'd like the Lord to be pleased with the Holy Spirit in this church, but at the same time, the devil not be able to move either. Amen. <clears throat> how many? How many know that there are some spirits that need to be quenched? Hallelujah. Preach it, preach it, preach it. People, I've had people say, you're quenching the spirit, you're quenching the spirit. No, I'm quenching your spirit. <laughs> <laughs> but the Holy Spirit does not need to be quenched. But every wrong spirit or flesh should be, should be, uh, not allowed to take over. Amen. Amen. I mean, there's been some meetings where, I mean, we had so much freedom for the Spirit to move. And there were, we had manifestations of the Spirit, miraculous stuff. But we also had some of the most goofy stuff happen there, too. Because we were just open. It's like, uh, you know, when it's young, just whatever, whatever, Lord, we just want you. We just want you. But see, that also, that openness, without understanding and without leadership, also makes us vulnerable for the wrong spirits to manifest. And we don't want that. So how do you discern between the right and the wrong? Anybody know? Always. Say always. Always, always go right back to the Word. Because the Spirit is not first. The Word is always first. Did you notice the Spirit's there? He's moving. He's hovering. He's right here right now. But He's not doing anything until the Word is spoken. Always go back to the Word. And here's an interesting... I've noticed this. People... I, how do I want to say this, Lord? There have, I have known people that think they know the Spirit, you can tell they're off because they don't know the Word. If you don't know the Word, you cannot know the Spirit. They go together. You have to know the Word in order to know the Spirit. That's how you discern what's right and what's wrong. You've got to know the Word. Right, because the word, that's a big one. I know people, I mean, they act like and they seem like, and to the perfect people that don't know the difference, they are so spiritual. And they get into some goofy stuff. And nobody even knows. Because they don't know the word. They assume titles. And they assume positions and they assume all kinds of other things. And it's not God. Just because it's spiritual doesn't mean it's God. Amen. 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 That's true. And I know the Lord's been laying some word foundation in us. But I don't believe we're only supposed to be a word church. 
I want to be a church that the Spirit moves in as well. Hey man, Pastor Ken, yeah, I'm going with you. Come on. <laughs> Anybody else want the church? It's not just the word, but the spirit also. All right, yeah, I'm going to pump you up today. I'm going to let the spirit pump you up. I'm just poking it a little bit, you know? You know those cattle prods? You know, that old summer cow don't want to move, so you go up behind it. They move. <laughs> I've seen a few folk move with them, too. I used to play with them when I was a little younger in the stores going to where well, the central tractor used to be. I think I got Jerry once, didn't I, Jerry? Oh. I probably got him. I'm sure I've gotten a few others. I know I did. You can admit Jerry. Yeah. Of course, I've, I've had the proud on me, too, because they snuck up on me. Oh, yeah. I reaped what I sow. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and I'm not talking about a church where the word and the spirit move. I'm talking about not just the church, not just in service, but I'm talking about all the time. Hallelujah. All the time in our lives. Hallelujah. In the job, on the car, and not any flesh or goofy stuff going on. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Lord, we're hungry. Hallelujah. We desire, we desire. The, real the real move of the true Holy Spirit. Teach us, help us, guide us in Jesus' name. Did you mean it? Do you want it? He's going to do it. Glory to God, he's going to do it. Hallelujah. So what can we do? What's our part? Well, that's what I want to talk about environment. And I'm about out of time. He moves in an environment of... Love. He moves in an environment of faith. He moves in an environment of gentleness Amen. and meekness. See, this is the nature of God. Amen. You are the one that's got to make that decision to affect your environment. Amen. I have been in homes where there was an environment of peace and love. I've also been in homes and around families that had an environment of strife. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> and some, what's interesting is some people, they live in that so long, Amen. they don't recognize it. Amen. Well, I'm just Irish. <laughs> no, you're carnal. Come on. Come on. Oh, we've always been that way. Well, you don't have to be. They don't even recognize it. The bickering and the, the strife and the yelling going back and forth. And they don't even realize they've created an environment of the wrong spirits. Amen. How many of you ever recognize you're sitting in your house and everything's nice and calm? And then that rebellious teenager come in the door. The atmosphere changed. Ball. Anybody ever recognize an atmosphere changed? Ball. <laughs> What's going on? Now see, it's up to you to control the environment of your own house. Amen. Now, in my immaturity in learning some of this, when we had the rebellious person come in, of course, that person knows what buttons to push on you. Anybody recognize that? Amen. And they'll come in, man, looking. Point, 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 point. And next thing you know, when that button's pushed, man, I mean, I was back up in their face. And what am I doing? I'm enhancing the environment that that person's carrying. It didn't help any. Even if I put him in the headlock, rubbed his nose on the floor, and threw him outside, the environment was still the same. So I learned, I recognize I have to go back to the Word. My battle is not physical, but it is spiritual. So I've got to adhere to my spiritual weapons. So what I figured out is I would go outside where that person never even heard a word. And I'd come against that spirit and bind him up and cast him out of my house 
And I'd come back in and it would be peaceful. Y'all get this? So now, we're, see, now I'm talking about your environment, my environment that we carry out there. What should it be? If we want God to manifest, love, gentleness, meekness. How many of you know you've been around, you can be all happy and everything and joyful, and somebody came in with that doom and gloom? I know some people that are very dear to me. I mean, uh, we've been having, at, at sometimes even a Bible study, you know, having a little meeting at my house. And certain people would come in, and next thing you know, man, the peace, the joy, everything left. Anybody experienced that? The heaviness just came in. Well, is there something we can do about it? Authority. Yeah, we can. I mean, you don't want to get in their face, you know what I mean, or anything like that. But it's like, <laughs> like I told you, I've done it. I've done it. Diane's done it to me. I've done it to her. When we would get caught up in the flesh and uh, be angry at the other one. You know, I think Diane, uh, she expresses her anger a little bit more than I do with with the uh, the words, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and yeah, I'm walking, I'm walking on, walking on water, and and I remember the first time I did it, it was like I had to work up the nerve. You know where I'm going? And and she was on me, man, and I knew that it wasn't God. I knew it wasn't right, and I said. I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And you know what? She didn't express it then, but she did quit. But she, I heard her tell somebody later, she could not be mad at me if she wanted to after that. Hallelujah. That's a woman thing. Hey! Now, you're going to have to be led by the Lord if you want to put that one to work. And she's done it to me, too. And it's like, it's like you know, you're all fired up. And she would say that next thing you know, the fire's gone. Now I'm trying to think of a reason to be mad. <laughs> Did you, are you guys getting this? See, we can control the environment. I can help her. She can help me. But then all of us come together in the church with an environment of love and care and concern for each other. Can the Spirit of God begin to move? What if we come into and we come together with an environment of faith? I'm expecting. I'm coming to give. If God wants me to give, man, I'm ready to give. Whether it's my time, my word, a ministry, however, I'm coming ready. Did you know you should come to church prayed up and ready? Amen. Not just coming to take, but come ready to give. Whether it's your love, whether it's a smile, whether it's a hug, a word, but you come ready. Prayed up and ready. God uses those who are ready. Did you know that? Because he knows if you have something to give. You say, I want to be used. I want to, I want the gifts to flow through me. I want to be used. I want to be. Well, be ready. Be open. Become come expecting God to use you. God to move. And if he don't use, bless God. Thank God he's moving through somebody else. I don't have to be the one laying hands on people. I'm just as thrilled when Brother Duffy or Chuck or Wendy or anybody else gets up here and lays hands on somebody. I'd be just as happy if Diane came up here and gave you a word. And she can. She don't like to, but she can. Are y'all with me? So y'all want to become come ready, come expecting. That's Affecting and creating an environment for God to move. Amen. 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 And, and I'm, I'm, I'm out of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up on this at the on about the atmosphere, the environment. That's right. Um,
what the Bible has to say about it. And we'll move on into that. So next week, well, this Thanksgiving week, right? Mm -hmm. Create an environment in your house when you gather, when you're with your family. Or create an environment that God can move in. Hallelujah. That's conducive for him. And that is an environment of love. Love isn't the mushy, mushy, goosey, goosey feeling, you know what I mean? I want to kiss all over you. No, no. It's love. Okay? That's the other one's lust. <laughs> or close to it. Amen. Do you have a song you want to play? Yeah, man, I'm ready. Huh? I can't hear you. Okay, okay, okay. He wants to minister to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let's not miss the opportunity this morning. Um, God spoke through Alice. And, and I, I think that was the first time I ever heard Carl give a word. He was open. Well, yeah, praise God. We want to thank thank God for people that are open and willing to be used. That would come ready. I don't want to be, I don't want this church to be a controlled where nothing or nobody can move. I want the Spirit of God to be able to move. I'm open. I'm also leadership. So that's why I share with you. We have to have an understanding to recognize what's God, what isn't. And don't be afraid to miss it because you probably will, just like me and everybody else. The thing is, we will judge. You follow me? You're giving the word? It's not it? Well, okay, okay, thank you. You know what I mean? We don't put people down or anything like that, but we judge. We know. Does it line up with the word? Is it in the right spirit? You know, you can do the right thing at the wrong time, too. How many know that? Let's yeah. yeah. stand to our feet because uh, I still believe there's healing here. I still believe there's a healing anointing here. Now, if you if you are one that needs healing. You believed you receive healing or you come up for healing, however it goes. I want you to recognize this so you don't walk out of here with your faith shut down. Healing technically means to recover. Recovery can begin now, the moment you receive. No different than if you had something you went to the doctor with and you take your first pill. You don't see nothing happening. You don't feel nothing happening. But recovery began. That is healing. Amen. Are you with me? I have done it. I've seen people do it because they don't have this understanding. They come up in a prayer line, lay hands on you. Hey, hey, I received my healing. Walk out. Well, nothing happened. They just shut their faith off. Keep your faith going. Believe you receive. There has never been anyone that trusted in the Lord and got shamed. In other words, let me put it this way. He didn't come through. People stopped trusting and he couldn't come through. But you'll never find anybody that has stood in faith and God, and God failed them. Just remember, stick with it. Stick with it. The moment your patience quit is the moment your faith quit.
quit. Amen. They go together. Gotta reach that virtue. Amen. 